Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? We're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we have a little bit different of a setup. We got two of the young guns kind of in the uh, in MIC. Um, there's like a whole group of them, the next-gen traders, and they have kind of taken it all by storm. Uh, everybody's really impressed with how much work they're putting in, um, the progress we're seeing. I mean, they, they have been here now for at least a year each, right? Maybe even a little bit like more or, some, or something. And then eight months, yeah. yeah. Close to that, yeah. good. So and it's cool to see the progression from you guys. You know, you had different trading styles and like kind of you guys are all seem to be finding your niche now and really, really making the next step. So I, I commend you guys. And, and like I said, I know everybody's really proud of you. So thank you for coming back on. And um, We'll kind of get into it. So last week, uh, what is that? The last week of January or something like that, we had an MIC meetup in California um, and all of them went. It was really cool. They got it. They rented an Airbnb, had like a fun time. And I'll let them tell you about that. But, you know, uh, Xander, if you want to start off, kind of give us some stuff that you learned at the meetup or even talk about it in general. Talk about meeting up with your tabs and everything in real life and, and kind of give us a little little bit of the lowdown. Yeah. So first thing I want to say is, um, like with anything in life, um, you, you know, anything that is secluded from like actual interaction with people, it's, it's very real experience once you actually get to like meet people in that community. Um, so anything where you get to go actually meet them, you just have a whole out, a whole different outlook on things. So after going to the meetup and actually meeting other traders, I realized I, it, it just like makes the entire thing real because we're so stuck to the computers. Yeah. So it doesn't feel real until you really meet everyone. And just talking to everyone that I've already talked to, like on Slack and stuff is, has, it's been really insane. Uh, just actually getting to learn from them, like learning all the different styles, especially because everyone trades a different way. And that's, that's the really cool thing about it. It is really yeah. cool. Yeah, I feel like that's cool when you when you meet people who kind of like do similar trading styles to like your niche as well. Um, because and it's just like anything, right? Like, I mean, if you work for a company or you work for whatever, like, you know, when you're going into the office every day, like you you also have that kind of like camaraderie and support from like your coworkers as well. And like, that's why like people without tabs, like you don't realize how much you need like a buddy to number one, keep you accountable, but also number two, keep you you like sane as you're going along this journey, because like, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Let me tell you that. So um, it's, it good absolutely have, not. it's good to have like a group of guys with the same kind of goals and vision that can kind of keep you motivated and like, you know, they can, they can help you out. That's kind of why I don't like love this like work from home like COVID idea because I feel like um, you need to have like a tab group and especially meeting them in person is like really cool because it, it gives you it's also like a healthy competition like you have people pushing you to go forward like farther like one thing around here so I live in Boston and uh, on he lives a town over from me. And um, he's another uh, moderator in the MIC chat and he's just awesome and I met him in person and he helped push me to like kind of like advance more and like give me like I don't know it's just it's weird sometimes hearing it online is great but like seeing these people in, in person to help kind of reiterate that in your mind is is pretty cool so I think yeah. it's awesome and you guys you guys rented an Airbnb right and like stayed together yeah and that's another thing uh, meeting all my close friends that I've known for like over a year now um, was really cool because it kind of showed me what is going to happen in the future more often like traveling mm -hmm. traveling and meeting all of them in a new location like I haven't really been in the heart of LA very much and like being there with my friends was really cool it's like a new experience and it's really motivating and inspiring because I'm going to be able to do that very like a lot more frequently in the future you guys are young so it's like you guys kind of haven't really gotten to experience like that much travel on your yeah. own I'm guessing because yeah. of COVID yeah. I mean before COVID that I was traveling all the time like I went to Europe for like two weeks and it's like now it's like i want to go do that so i can go see tom see bear yeah. and i'll go to canada see harry it's like now i can't even fucking really do that so yeah like that's yeah, cool it's, it's, james and i actually don't and I will be, oh keep going sam yeah no i was just gonna say at the end of this summer xander and i will be headed out of country for like the first time to yeah. amsterdam shit. to go meet steven for an mic meetup out in amsterdam oh shit that's, <laughs> that's so, fucking like, sick 
it's all starting this year. <laughs> Bro, you guys, you guys should not go to Amsterdam. Yeah. <laughs> it's what so, what, it's what so month fun. are you guys thinking of doing it? Um, I don't think he's given an official month. He just said the end of this summer he's going to set it up. Um, yeah. So, because me and my girlfriend, like, we're like seriously looking about like getting out of Canada and just like oh, traveling yeah. for the summer. Because, like, I mean, I've been stuck, man. I have been stuck. Yeah. Like, if you guys know about any of the shit that's been going on, like, I've just been stuck. So super excited to kind of uh, leave. And I think we want to go to Europe, like, into, like, France and, like, just travel around. Awesome. I don't really want to have, like, a plan set. I just want to travel around. And James and me actually don't live that far. Like, no, I mean, Canada, Canada, like, even New York. I know I'm in Boston, but Canada to New York is, like, what, like, a couple, like, an hour, two hour flight to uh, Harry? Dang. Oh, yeah, but like, even drive, bro. Like, even if yeah. I drove down, it's only eight hour drive. Oh, it's not, which is not it's that nothing. far. <laughs> I know. So, I'm, I'm excited for this year. I, I'm glad we kind of started off like this and, and hopefully have more meetups. Like, we, I mean, the New York meetup, like two years ago before COVID, was amazing. Like, we've had some fun ones. So, yeah. I'm glad you guys had a lot of fun and got to actually interact with each other. And, you know, what, what kind of things did you pull from it? So, like, because obviously being around people who make, I mean, Alex Bao, like, those guys are obviously seven, eight figure traders. And what, what did being around them, like, what did you pull from it? Did you guys learn anything that took, you took immediately into your own trading um, or anything like that? I think for me, um, it was the simplicity of it where like, obviously, you, you know, like Xander was saying, you meet, you see everybody online and it's hard to see it as like real life. You know, um, everybody's on a screen, even trading, you're pushing buttons, you're, you know, it's almost seems like a video game sometimes. And so meeting everybody in real life, it made it real. It was like, oh, shoot, like this is a real thing. This is a real job. This is a real career. Um, and the thing that I just was just amazing is you're sitting there with talking with Alex, talking with Bao, even the other traders, Steven. And it's just like, it's so simple. Like when there's no secret sauce, a like Kung Fu Panda, you know, it's like this, the, the, <laughs> the secret is that there is no secret, right? Yeah. Yep. So it's yep. like when meeting everybody and talking, it's like, they're saying the same things that they have always said in the webinars, on the videos and chat. Like there is no secret sauce that you learn when you're with them. It's so simple. It's exactly what they've been teaching. But it's like when you're meeting them in person, it kind of takes the overthinking out of it. You're just in a face-to-face -face mm -hmm. conversation. You're talking stocks and it's just like, oh, that really is it. Like that's the, yeah. that's how to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, I think we, we always look at these people like, especially when you're like new into it, you look at people who have made it as like wizards. You're like, these people aren't even real. Like, because honestly we, we are in a, a industry of kind of like frauds and like gurus and like people who just like, they say, oh, trading is easy. And it's like, you see it and it's like hard to even believe it yourself. And once you kind of meet these people in real life and like hear it, like, I remember the first time I like met up with Alex and I was like, oh, this dude's just like a normal fucking dude. Like, he's yeah. not like, he's not Jeff Bezos, no offense. You know, he's not like Warren <laughs> Buffett. He's just this normal ass dude. He's just like trading like normal. And it's like, I feel like you guys have kind of progressed into that stage now where like you realize there is no... There's no like magic eight ball that's telling anyone that when to go short, when to cover and all that shit. It, it yeah. really is just, pro it's just process driven. And it's like a simplistic process. And, and Xander, I know you've really progressed that way. Cause I can see it in your charts. Like I know before you were much more like sporadic and now you kind of have a set process in a set style of trading that you are just sticking to and it, and it, and it works well for you. Yeah. Yeah. And talking to Tyler at the event was especially good. Cause um, yeah, for everyone, for everyone who doesn't know, I trade all day faders now, um, and there's not that many like good all day faders out there because it's a hard, uh, hard strategy to do because you have to be willing with drawdown, you have to be disciplined to stick to a system, and so talking to Tyler there and making a good connection with him was really awesome because there's not many faders out there. So and he was there, and it was yeah that was a great connection to make. So it's all about networking. Um, and make connections like I know Sam talked a lot to Steven and that's a future connection that's going to pay off in the long run too yeah Sam are you doing the faders or like what have what have you been kind of working on oh, Hell no. Sam, <laughs> no so seems like I blew up I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no so um I'm actually kind of like transitioning a little bit um after some conversations with Steven and um you know Nelly two-way trader um 
I've been hitting outer lines, just like the outer lines of, of a, a move, yeah. um, which has not been much in January. Nothing's getting back there. And if it does, it squeezes. Um, and then covering it, like, I don't fade it, but I do wait for strong support. So like low a day yeah. um, or really, really key pre-market. Um, but, you know, the thing that I realized was, you know, you're just spending so much of your time just sitting and waiting, which is good when, when, you're, when your system isn't there, wait for your edge. Um, but watching like, you know, Steven and two way and obviously James, you bow everybody, instead of being, it's funny, there can be almost a thing of being too disciplined where you're not yeah. taking traits, you know, and I, that's almost yeah. an excuse that I've used, um, for fear of taking losses. It's like, no, I've, I won't take any too. trade. I won't take any trade except for right here, because I'm afraid yeah. of anything else. I'm going to take a loss for it, but that yeah. probably means I'm size too strong or my stop is too tight, you know? And yep. so oh, yeah. I'm, I'm actually allowing myself over the next couple of months, creating a little bit more um, flexibility. So instead of just hitting a, a really strict outer line, I'm hitting like the outer area. So uh, yep. Steven talked about it. There are entry zones and there's cover zones, right? Yep. And, um, and I'm really focusing on hitting the just entry zones. I'm going back into the 10% uh, size, you know, scaling 30% size and adding to my yep. winners, um, yeah. mm -hmm. which is very, very hard for a newer trader or even, you know, an amateur trader or um, intermediate, because that is all about experience. You know, that's the discretionary yep. side of trading. You've got to have insane discipline. You can't let your emotions get the best of you because you have to stay above, above all of that to be able to play the chart, you know, but um, yeah, yeah, I, hitting, that, it hitting is our areas. That's it's tough because <clears throat> because when you're when you're trying to like add on confirmation and stuff like like I have a, a good friend who's learning the trade as well and he's he kind of fell into this trap of like having some bad days because he kept trying to add on confirmation but like realistically when you're new sometimes it's too hard to like you don't have the the screen time or like you don't know the nuances yet like yeah. like now it's like after years of doing this like i remember when i was kind of where you were and thinking like i don't know what the fuck confirmation is i don't know when to add mm -hmm. and all that shit like and now like honest to god like what i always recommend people is like you're always better off like adding later than sooner and like yeah. just moving your risk down which helps a ton like everyone always just freaks out because they they add on confirmation and then it's almost like a mental thing it's like the second you add you don't want to stop out because now you're like fuck i finally just added like now i don't want to stop out yeah. and it's like I think something that's really helped my trading and like something maybe would help you. I don't know. It's just, again, I like adding a little later than too soon. Like I'm fine, like living with a starter and then adding and moving my wrist down rather than being like, fuck, I need to get all in right now. And like, like have my risk. Cause like sometimes it's, it's hard to identify a risk off a line in right. the moment sometimes, you know, like right. when things are like popping and all that stuff. And, and what you said about like zones too, um, Huge thing I, I've used is the volume profile. Like, I, it's, oh, yeah. it's not for everybody. It's, it's kind of like, uh, I know you use it as well, I think. But, yep. you know, it, it gives you an idea of where to get in and get out. Because, like, Bao says it all the time. It's not a science. Like, there's, there is no exact formula to getting in and getting out or, like, where to stop out and all that realistically. And you can really tell a lot by just volume and kind of, like, on the chart. So, but it's cool that you're, you guys have. I like that you guys are tabs and you both have your own style. So how do you guys work together with that? Like, how do you help each other? Cause like all day faders versus like what Sam's doing and then versus what the twins I'm sure are doing, like all very different. Right. So like, how do you guys work together? And like, what do you do? So first, yeah. So the main thing isn't so much in the strategy, but instead like keeping me with it, because as you guys know, uh, I switch it's like systems. I switch strategies <laughs> yeah. like every week and I'm one of those people. And so <laughs> I, I, I do have the discipline to last a couple of weeks, but already uh, I've been like, oh, should I, should I be discretionary trading? Cause I feel like it would be better performing in this market, but Sam keeps me on the all day faders. He keeps me he, like, I know that I know what I need to be doing, but I have the desire to be profitable now and not mm -hmm. taking the long-term success route, which I know all day faders will because it's a system and it, it just fits my personality. And Sam just reminds me of that every day. Um, and so that's, that's really the main thing that's going on right now. Um, but yeah. yeah. yeah I want to I piggyback on that because to me, like tabs and tabs groups, like sure, it's great to share your charts and it's great to have people to go over technical analysis with, analysis with or to watch videos with or to get advice from. But like 
you have mentors for that, right? You've got moderators yeah. and really experienced traders who can actually analyze your charts, give you really, really good advice. But to me, having a tab and a tab group, it's about more the psychology of trading. Like mm -hmm. Xander said, keeping each other accountable, keeping each other focused on what you know we're supposed to be, not deviating from our process or from you know the way we're supposed to trade. And the biggest thing for me with you know Xander and, and my tab group is like after a day, if I take a loss or something, a little I was a couple of days ago, I texted Xander, I'm like, bro, I'm gonna need that tab call tonight. Like, like I just need a tab call <laughs> yeah. tonight. And we'll just get on, on call. We'll talk about the day. We'll sh share our charts and we'll just sit and just kind of blow steam, you know, and whatever it is, it usually ends in like this amazing rant that leads to this breakthrough, you know, yeah. Yeah. but it's like having a tab is about having somebody there to bounce things off of your emotions and, you know, your day, not as much like, here's my chart, analyze it for me and give me advice. You know, you got to have that yep. balance. Yeah. I like yeah. that. And I think uh, also like, I just never got to really chime in about like your strategy on the outer lines. Um, if I were you, I would probably like, I mean, I would try and play something kind of like similar to like the way Xander kind of does it where like Xander, like, um, like he has like his in initial entries and then he kind of adds to his winner. Mm -hmm. If you, I'm going to say probably like nine out of, 10 stocks by the time they get to the top of that range in this market and the current conditions we're in right now, like almost always uh, like clear out and then go lower, right? Almost always hundred fucking percent. I'm literally a long trader. Austin and I have been dealing with this for, <laughs> uh, I don't know, a while. And so if you kind of just slowly kind of scale in with not that much size just so you can be comfortable enough size so you're watching the ticker and enough size that you're in but yeah. not enough size that you're sweating but then once we stuff or we get that kind of like get the clear out that yeah yeah then you can just start a, you can really hammer size on those pops and then kind of wait for it to get to the bottom and when it's at kind of that mid to like bottom of the range, like that kind of like, I guess, like lower third of the range, that's yeah. when you can kind of look at covering and kind of when it gets like under view app and we get lower to that bottom support, that's when you can kind of look at covering. I think the key really is with stuff like that is that you have to say like, am I anticipating, right? So like what, what part of this trade is my anticipation and what part of this trade is my confirmation? And you can feel it when you're right. When you're like, damn, I nailed that. Like, mm -hmm. that's sick. And then you look at your size and you're like, fuck, but I didn't get enough size. Well, now that you're saying I nailed that, you can add anywhere on the chart. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fucking pop. You can just slam the bid. You're right. You know, you are right. You have a set risk. Average doesn't matter now, right? Um, you know, so when once you get that confirmation, just take like maybe like half your full size, just add it in. You're like, all right, confirmed. I'll wait for a pop, but like whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Because you are confirmed. Your thesis is right. The market has shown you that you're right. So therefore just click the button, slam the fucking bid and maybe add some more into a pop. And then, you know, you have a, a decent average. That is what I would be doing. Because if you look at my longs, like for me, I've been doing like a lot of like multi-day setups and these things in the morning are dead right? They are dead. So if I'm looking at a uh, stock, what for me would be the confirmation for me to want to start getting in? And then what would be the confirmation for me to kind of start adding size? And for me, the number one confirmation is number one, I'm looking at the lines and looking at the resistance and support. So, but it's a little bit, it's got to be a bit more than the resistance and support, because if you're just saying, oh, it bounced off this line and there's no volume, well, you're going to be shit out of luck when the shit tanks, you know, 30 cents lower, right? But for me, it's been the volume coming into the stock that has been my initial kind of entry signal. And then when the stock starts ripping, I'm adding, and then I'm selling a bit higher and I know I'm confirmed and I know I'm right. So you can really do the opposite of that shorting, whereas you're saying to yourself, okay, we're getting the volume you can do the exact opposite and say, we're getting the volume into this move. So a few confirmation signals would be the volume starting to die out once we've kind of cleared over that high and that classic, you know, we rip over high day stuff and it doesn't necessarily have to be two or three cents over high day. You can give it 10, you know, 15 cents, add up into those kind of zones. You're confirmed. I mean, I, if I were you, I'd be just slamming the fucking bid. 
Don't wait yeah. for a fucking pop. Get half that size. You're going to hear pros first. <laughs> and, uh, you know, stick to that. When you're right, I think that that's a big thing. Like, like a lot of traders, they get full size and then they're like, like they're, they're still guessing, right? You shouldn't need to guess. You should yeah. be like, I'm right. I know I'm right. Boom, full size. I'm fucking in. Right, Harry. That is 100% my struggle in January because, like I said, I was just hitting those outer lines. I'd hit, you know, pretty much full size because it was the outermost line. So, what else is there to scale into? Yeah. And then I just got cleared out, cleared out, cleared out, cleared out. And it was so frustrating. So, January was like a hard month. Yeah. And then that's when, you know, I've adjusted to be like, okay, I need to a smaller size, hit the outer areas. Yeah. And then, like you said, add once it confirms. And that usually means add after the clear out. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so true. And um, shout out to, to Two Way uh, Trader for some really amazing mentorship that he's been giving to Xander and I um, recently. Two Way's awesome. He's, he's a good really dude. great. Um, but like BCA really, really good dude. was the perfect example of what you're talking about, Harry. Where like pre market, it was I think like a 220 was the high. Market opened, it popped up to 215, went back down, squeezed up to 230s, cleared out the pre market high day, cleared out the high day, and then at 230. It had like seven red candles and just completely faded back down to like, I don't know, it was like 210 or something. And then I hit it on the bounce back up to 220 and, you know, wrote it back down. But Two Way nailed that with adding oh, yeah. into the clear out, you know? He's a, he's a good trader, man. He, he really yeah. is. And, and he's progressed a lot too. And, and he's actually been on the podcast too. So you guys can listen to that. But there's some like a, like a small piece of advice for right now. For, this is for everybody. It's just, dude, this market we're in right now and it's, february 4th 2022 the market sucks right now i i honestly like i don't think it's favorable for shorts longs i mean obviously not for longs at all but i mean even shorts so it's just we are not range bound so like right now if you're trying to trade a system or a process or whatever like this is a terrible time and it's a shitty time to do it because unfortunately like you're we're not getting enough sample sizes and things to even test our strategies and like like trade the way we should like there hasn't really been opportunity like i feel like i've been like so bored for like two months and so it, it's it's important that you guys are like sticking with like i just made a video last night about like just sticking with like your same process and like what you're doing like i like that you guys are like you figured out what you're what you're doing what you're good at and like basically like through any market like because i honestly think if you can survive in this market without like bleeding your accounts to zero i think that's like a massive win because this is fucking yeah. shit this is a shit market, dude. It's awful. And, and I think Xander, I had a question for you is that I get DMS all the time. People ask me like how, what, what kind of trading style they should do? Like, how do they know what their style is? So how did you come to find that? Like doing the all day faders for you was your trading style because it's not an easy thing to, to figure out. The main thing is the risk reward. Cause with scalp, like I'm a huge overthinker and I always overthought the risk reward with uh, scalping and not like, not like the scalping you might think, but like even just, you know, shorting VWAP, covering, nailing, bailing. That just yep. didn't, that didn't resonate with me. And uh, because of the risk reward, I was getting about like 0.5 reward uh, to one risk. And my win rate was pretty like, and I know I would be profitable with that style if I kept going at it, but it just didn't fit my style. Um, and I've also known I'm always like a numbers person. So I have, you know, I track stuff on Excel um, and I just like the idea of having a, a, a black and white system to follow. So I don't have to do much thinking when it comes to market. Most of the stuff comes pre-market after hours, um, where I'm developing and refining my system. I mean, it, I just felt it when I started. So I tried it all. And then I just felt with the system, it, it worked best with me. I like that. I like that. I think, I think it's, it's hard to figure out. So Sam, what do you... Same with you. How did you find your style? What makes you comfortable? And, and how did you know? Well, you know, what's really funny. Xander and I actually had this conversation like three nights ago um, as I was kind of talking about what I'm kind of switching up and everything. And um, really quick, something, James, is like when the market is hard, a lot of people are going to go and try every other style that they possibly can. You know, they're going to try Agreed. long in when it's a bull, bull market and they're going to go short when it's a bear. And the thing is, like with me, I noticed that my strategy was having a hard time in this market but I didn't throw it all out the door and like restart and try chasing something different. I just made small adjustments to my trading. I like it. Sizing smaller before, like Harry said, before the clear out. Yeah. So when the market's hard and your strategy's hard, don't throw it all away and go chasing something else. Just make adjustments 
and just tweak it. You know what I'm saying? But um, for me, it's really about your personality. It's so true. Like the diff- there's so many different strategies <laughs> that you've got to find out what works for you. And I was just talking with Xander and the thing is with my personality, my hardest thing in trading has always been confidence, having confidence in my trading. I don't know why it was just, it's just whatever, you know? And so what I found is that when I was waiting for risk and reward setups, that was very difficult for me because I was taking a loss after a loss after a loss. Sure. The win would, you know, cover them, but it was just really hard for me mentally because of just taking losses. And I realized that with the MIC process and with, you know, maybe hitting kind of taking wins and, and, you know, locking in gains and adding and whatnot, you're getting these adrenaline um, junks that are thrown at you. You know, these just like kind of dopamine rushes as you're locking in gains and you're taking wins and every day, you know, you're, you're taking these small wins that add up. And so I just realized that for me, um, obviously still hitting the outer lines areas, but switching back to the win rate and, and locking in the gains every single day, was just way, I mean, healthier for me mentally. Yep. You know, and yep. I enjoy trade. I enjoy trading more that way. I'm in the matrix that way. I, I have to go to the gym afterwards because I'm so like hyped. hyped you up. Know? Yeah. And so it's just knowing your weaknesses and knowing your strengths. And I'm very, very disciplined. So discretionarily, discretionary trading I can do because I don't get wrapped up in the emotions of the trade. I enjoy it and I love it, but I don't get wrapped up in the emotions. So I'm not, you know, adding lows and slamming size. Like I'm very disciplined, so I can, that's my strength with discretionary. Um, but then knowing my weakness and knowing that I need that win rate to kind of keep me going every single day. Yeah, I, like I, mean, I think uh, if you look at the kind of market as a whole, I know I mentioned this on the podcast a lot. Um, it's really about just like driving liquidity, right? Like, um, for example, like where are, um, you know, where, where are longs looking to chase, Right. Well, high a day is a good spot for longs to chase because they're thinking we're going to get that range breakout. All shorts are stuck, right? They, they, you know, they press the buy button and most people in the market are long. I'd say maybe like 20, well, not necessarily now in small caps because we do have a lot of people shorting, but when you like in on Twitter and stuff like that, you see a lot of people shorting, but I'd say the majority of like dumb people, dumb money coming into the market is longing. Um, so, you know, where are they looking to, to buy, right? Top of the range, usually they've missed the move. They wish they bought the dip. That's where they're buying because they're thinking all shorts are stuck or whatever they think. I don't even know. And, you know, they end up getting stuffed on and they're like, well, what did I do wrong, right? It's the same thing with the VWAP replay setup. Like, how many times do we have to get over VWAP and come back down and get over VWAP and come back down and get over VWAP before finally we get that move, right? And it's all just driving liquidity. The first three times we go over VWAP, it's all those long chasers, right? So it's like I'm a bigger player. I'm going to be like, oh, I'll just put the stock over VWAP a little bit. I'll sell to these (laughs) fuckers and then I'll rip it back down. And then, you know, it's the same process over and over again. It's the same thing with the lows when you're a long trader, right? Like, you know, if I was a... uh, uh, you know, uh, a manipulator or a big player, well, I'd make sure to stop them all, all out before I can run it again because, um, you know, it's hard to run a stock when you have a bunch of bag holders, right? So it's all a liquidity-driven game. And I think if you can uh, use that to your advantage and say to yourself, like, okay, like, I'm using the outer lines because I'm relying on this kind of nine times out of 10 liquidity-driven game. And I'm going to say to myself, well, I'm just going to add in smaller over that high a day and then really add into that confirmation. And then that's where you, I think, will find really a lot of success. And I think as far as the adding to a confirmation, like don't make it difficult on yourself and don't make it hard on yourself. You, like when you're sitting there and you're you're watching the tape and you're, you know, you're, you, whatever the fuck Sam does, his eyes are on the screen and he's <laughs> looking. And, Zone the uh, fuck in. You know, you see that stuff moving, you're like, shit, man, that's crazy. Just start fucking slamming, you know, just slamming. Yeah. You're fucking right. You know, you have added into the confirmation. You've been patient. It's shown you what it wants to do. H- how many times do you see the stock go over high a day, absolute big slam candle, and the shit comes back? Almost never, because you've seen the agenda now. But the reason why no one adds is because they're like, oh, well, I missed it, right? I missed it. Yeah. And that's the problem. So don't get too uh, 
everyone's like short, short the pop, short the pop, which I do understand. I completely guess that. For someone who's just shorting outer lines, the best ones, and uh, I got this from uh, I mean a lot. You know, he was like the best faders really don't pop. You know, they just keep fucking going. Kind of true. <laughs> And it's same with the yeah. best longs too. The best longs are not going to give you a good entry to get in, right? They're going to keep going and going and going because it's relying on those chasers to really drive the move higher, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, like the best the best shorts are not going to have a big, big, big pop, right? Everyone, every, everyone who's trapped on the long side is just selling. They don't even care if they get a yeah. pop. They're just fucking selling, selling, selling. And that really drives it lower. So I think like if I was you, like I'd just be like, okay, you know, smaller size, smaller size, smaller size, smaller size. Shit, start <laughs> stuffing, add, and then just let it ride for a little bit. Wait for yeah. your kind of cover zones and then that's it. Yeah, it's so true. Yep. And what, what you said with like trading the liquidity, like to me, obviously liquidity, volume, and liquidity and, and volume equals to me emotion. Yeah. Right. Like that is the emotion of the traders who are on the stock with you. And so that's why, like as a short seller, I want to trade where the highest emotion is. I want to trade where the, the longs are greedy and the shorts are pissing their pants, you know? And so it's like, you've got to be above all of those things in order to take advantage of it. So like with the high day clear out, your average short sale, especially after 2020 and 2021, there's so many noobs who are in you know, the market and trading now that there's so much emotion, there's so much new emotion. And so it's like with the high day clear out, that's where short sellers are going like, oh crap, I need to get out. And that's where the, the experienced short seller, the person who's above those emotions, yeah. they should be going, this is perfect. This is exactly yeah. what I want to see, you know? Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Um, I think that, that, yeah, that's definitely true. You know, um, just really, I think that is probably the most important part is just like adding when you know you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, that's really trading. Yeah. And trading is really just knowing, just like having an idea. And like this can come in with the system too, because if you look at everyone, everyone has their own process, which is really just technically boils down to a system. I mean, whatever you want to call it, process, system, you know, whatever. But um, I think that, you know, a lot of it is just saying like, okay, this is my thesis on the, on the day. This is what I think is going to happen. And then I'm going to add small size into the idea. And then I'm really going to hammer it when it's confirmed. And if you can do that, that's how you get full size on. That's how you have the confidence to keep going forward. That's how you really, really, really uh, can take these little cuts, but it's not costing you money because it's small enough size that you can take it over and over and over again. And when you are right, you have big enough size to cover the paper cuts and, you know, buy yourself a nice dinner later on in the day. Right. So uh, that is, that's really the, the key to this, I think, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, trading is not fucking easy. I mean, as you guys know, it's like, I like interviewing you guys too, because it's like, we had you both on previously. And, and I think it's like, you guys are now like in this long enough to understand like trading sucks. Like it is a hard <laughs> job. Like there's a lot to it. And like, so I, I'm really, I really am happy that you guys at least have each other to like bounce off of and like grow with because dude, if you're in this for the long haul, like you'll drive yourself nuts. Like again, you, once you think you figured it all out, then something will slap you in the face just to remind you like you're not perfect. We're all not perfect. Yeah. And just like I said, man, just keep surviving this market, get through this. I get on trader calls with members all the time. They're just struggling. And it's like, it's like, guys, like right now, it's like, this is like a hands-off market. Like, it's like, if a trade doesn't present itself, we're just not trading. We're just chilling and just, just kind of relaxing. And, and I think you guys are doing a great job. And uh, Xander, I really do commend you for at least sticking to it. Because like I said, during right now, all day faders fucking suck. And they just really, they're just tough, right? You're just not getting that, that follow through that you're looking for. So yeah. it, it mental, mentally, it's impressive that you even can stick to it. So I am really happy That's for you. Major Thank shout you. out to Xander for that. Because that, yeah, I know <laughs> That's his biggest weakness is changing cycles and, and processes. And so the fact that he's like found his trading strategy and he's been sticking with that and I'll keep making Huge. sure he sticks with that, but obviously it's <laughs> mainly on him. Like, that's, that's a big, that's a big thing for him. And so it's, it's really, really good.
And I'm glad I'm glad people are like starting to make memes about me being an ADF. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then this, podcast, the this podcast. Because, <laughs> yeah, bro, because you know if you switch that, you're still gonna uh-huh. be getting so fucked fuck fuck so. now. <laughs> it kind of it kind of makes me identify with that. I'm an I'm an all-day fader. Like now I can't I can't change. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fucking awesome dude you guys are psychopaths i think it's a psychopathic <laughs> strategy but i think it's awesome it is <laughs> it's funny but we are coming up i mean we're at like 30 40 minutes but i guess before we go um both of you guys you have any last minute advice for new members or people potentially joining sander i would say be patient because ever since i started i've been like trying to rush to find the thing that's going to be the most profitable the quickest Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> Sorry, so, God for for the listeners. Somebody posted a meme in main chat of James, and it's oh, hard not god. to smile. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, Harry. but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the main thing is just to be patient. Give it time uh, to find your your style, because I'm always in a rush to find what's going to be most profitable. But if I really slow down and stuck to one thing. I would have been profitable a lot long, a lot longer ago. Like I would have been profitable in 2021. So just be patient. And if you feel you have, if you feel you have a style, stick with it. Like set a three month, four month rule where you stick with it. You grind every day to refine that. And I think you'll be profitable with that uh, as long as you stick with it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I want to tie it back in, you know, with the meetup and everything. Um, 2021 was the hardest year of my life. Um, learning how to trade and and figuring this out um the mental battles that you go through and the discipline that it requires and the blood sweat and tears i mean days where you're just in your room crying where you want to punch a wall where it's just not working um obviously i I had you know personal things that that went on this year that were extremely difficult yeah and it's just it can't be matched and it can't be underrated how important it is to have a freaking community around you like having your tab group and, you know, Xander, if it wasn't for Xander and my tab group, I would not still be trading. Yeah, I, I, I don't need to have any self, you know, pride about it. Like, I would not still be here, you know. But it's like the community of MIC is, is so valuable, especially for people who are more emotional like me. You have to have people around you. And when I was at the meetup, it was just like, these are real people. I mean, we're talking about football or we're... <laughs> I won't name one of the bodies, like, you know, I was swiping so much on Tinder and I don't even know I'm going to go out on a date. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's it's just that's real. Josh. Yes. Josh is just like a fidget spinner and he just like spins it and then like, <laughs> oh, puts it on Tinder and he's just like. <laughs> oh, yeah. But it's just like, it, it's real people, you know? And, and after the meetup, having conversations with Steven, it just, it made me feel a part of, of a community made me feel not crazy, you know, and after such a, a crazy year that that's so valuable. So find your community. And, and for me, I think for almost anybody, it's going to be MIC, but it's like, find your community and that will keep you going on the, on the really, really hard days. Love that. Good, uh, I feel like we should just cut it right there. That was-